Hey guys, Miguel at First Drive here. And today, we're gonna show you how to properly assemble your Mercedes SL63 for First Drive using the detailed instructions that come with the vehicle and the hardware included. Before you get started, I'd like to point out it's important that you make sure that you have all your hardware and parts. Now on page seven in your manual, there is a parts menu list that will tell you everything that you need to put the vehicle together properly. You wanna make sure you have everything before you start to ensure you have the right assembly. If you look over here, you will see the four wheels, the way you can distinguish whether they're front wheels or rear wheels is, the rear wheels will have a hub sticking out like this, where the front ones will not. Here you have your windshield, your simulated wheel covers, your mirrors, this is a remote control for parent control, and of course, your charger. If you look over here, you'll see you have your manual, detailed instructions. The instructions call for a screwdriver and a wrench or pliers, which is what I have here. You wanna make sure you have all the appropriate hardware. If you see inside the bag, there's a long screw. This is for the steering wheel. Sometimes it may be in the bag, Sometimes they may be already attached to the steering wheel. So you want to check to see that you actually have it before you install it. Here you have your seat, your headphone jack, and of course, the most important part of all, your first drive sticker. Assembly starts on page eight and it calls for the rear wheel installation, which is pretty straightforward. What you want to do is remove the plastic covers that are attached to the axle. Now for this part of the installation, you're gonna need your rear wheel with the hub, and you're going to need a washer, as well as a cotter pin. As per the instructions, we're gonna start with the rear wheels. What you wanna do is flip the vehicle over carefully You want to remove the protective covering that was on the axle and the tape that holds the motors together. Now again, you want the wheel that has the hub on it. You simply slide it on here. And make sure that it falls right inside where the motor sits. Once you do that, you want to take your washer, slide it over, take your cotter pin, slide it through the hole. Now you could either do it by hand or you can use a needle nose to simply bend them and this will keep your wheel in place. Now you want to make sure that the axle rod is pushed in as far in as possible to ease the insulation of the other side. Again, the process is the same. Slide the wheel over, making sure it falls right inside the motor. You got your washer, your cotter pin. Slide it over, put your cotter pin in. Again, you wanna make sure that the axle rod is exposed enough so that you can get to the cotter pin. Simply bend that one, and now your wheels are secured. They're in place. Now we want to turn our attention to the front wheel assembly, which simply involves taking your washer, sliding it over, sliding your wheel over, and again, you want to grab your washer and cotter pin Slide it over as so. Put your cotter pin in. And again, you just want to bend that to secure the wheel in place. The process is repeated for the other side. And that pretty much completes the wheel assembly for the vehicle. Now the next step calls for your wheel covers. 
Now it's important that you look at where the tabs are on the wheel cover so that you could correctly line them up with the tab holes on the wheel. If you look closely, you'll see that one of the tabs on the wheel cover is larger than the other ones. That's because on the wheel itself, there's a larger hole as opposed to the other ones. You wanna make sure that that large tab goes into that large hole. Simply slide it over, a little bit of pressure, they pop in, it's secured in place. Process is repeated in the rear wheel as well. Again, large tab, large hole, and you line them up. And there you go. There you have the completed wheel assembly. The next step calls for the steering wheel install installation. You wanna remove the protective covering and you also want to make sure that the wiring is exposed for the steering wheel so that you can connect your horn assembly. Now, you want to take your steering wheel and so and you want to grab your long screw and the only nut that's in the kit. Now, it is important that you notice that on the one side of the steering wheel has the shape of the actual nut. That's the side you want to put the nut in. Where the other side is just round, that's the side of the screw goes in. With that being said, simply make your connection, make sure it's nice and firm, don't pull it too tight. Now, you wanna make sure your wheels are straight. You wanna slide your wiring in, and now slide your steering wheel in. And what you wanna do is, you wanna make sure that you can see right through that axle right there. Once you're happy with what you see, slide the screw in, as so. Then, you wanna go to the other side. You wanna slide in. The nut is gonna sit right in place. Now, what you wanna do is, at this point, you wanna hold down this nut so it stays in place using the screwdriver. You want to make sure that the screw goes all the way across and grabs on the nut. Doesn't have to be super tight as long as it grabs. And now the steering wheel is in place and secured. That completes the steering wheel assembly. Next step calls for the windshield installation. You want to take your windshield and you want to simply just carefully line up the tabs on both ends. You just want to give it a little bit of pressure so that it pops in place. As so. Now, also included in this step is a pair of screws to secure the windshield in place. You wanna find the holes that are right in the corners of the windshield on the inside. You wanna take your screw and simply screw the windshield in place. Now, I wanna add right now that it is a lot easier to use a power tool such as a drill, although I advise against it, simply because a lot of this plastic are soft and the drill might be too powerful and might damage or completely destroy the part that you're assembling. You wanna repeat the process on the driver's side, the screw, and now your windshield's in place. Next step calls for the installation of your side view mirrors. Basically what you wanna do, you wanna grab your mirrors, carefully just pop them right in. When you hear that pop, you know the mirror's in. The 
process is repeated for the driver's side. The next step calls for the installation of your seat. Before you install the seat, you want to make sure that all of your connections in the battery compartment are secured and connected. So, normally they come with the power cord disconnected. So what you want to do is connect that before you put the seat in, otherwise the vehicle will not run. The wires are color matched, so you know which one goes where. Simply make that connection, you hear the snap, you're good to go. Make sure all your other connections are right. Make sure your battery is connected and secured. And before we put the seat in, let's just give it a try, make sure everything is operating. As you can see, we're good to go. Now, you wanna grab your seat. And if you notice, at the bottom are two notches or two tabs rather, that go into the notches in the battery compartment of the vehicle. You can see them right around here. So, what you wanna do is take the seat, make sure both tabs go into the notches, and if you notice on the back, there's a little ear for the one screw that secures it from behind. You wanna make sure that the seat belt is out of your way so you don't cover it with the seat. Simply disconnect it and move it out the way. And again, the two tabs go into the two notches right there on the body. Once they're in there, you just want to slide the seat back. At that point, you grab the screw and you want to secure the seat from behind as so. Single screw. Now your seat is nice and firm and secure. Now, at this point, you wanna make sure everything is in its proper place, everything is secured. Obviously our connections are good because the vehicle starts. So at this point, the assembly is complete, but actually not complete because you need this, the first drive sticker that goes on the hood of the car. It's the most important part of the vehicle. Simply take your beautiful first drive sticker, and apply it to the hood right there. And now your vehicle is complete. Finally, I'm gonna show you how to pair your remote to the vehicle itself. Now it is possible it can be repaired from the factory, but if it's not, I'm gonna show you the proper way to do it. You wanna turn your vehicle on. And immediately what you wanna do is hold down the forward and back button till you see this red light start blinking. Then release the buttons. Once the light stops blinking, your vehicle is good to go. Your vehicle is now paired to the remote. As you can see, left, right, forward, reverse. And I also want to point out on the remote control, you have a button with a P on it, which is pretty much either pause or you could say parking brake. And what that is, if you are, if your child is running the vehicle manually and you see that he might be in some kind of danger or out of control, you simply hit the P and you see the lights flash and it will completely disable the vehicle so your child will be safe. On the other side of the remote, you have an S, which is for the speed. So you have three different speeds on this vehicle, just normal, a little faster, and then the faster speed is controlled by the S. Well, this completes the assembly of the vehicle. Thank you for watching and we hope this has been very helpful. If there are any issues or questions you may have, feel free to call our technical team and we'll be more than happy to walk you through. Thank you.